It's a great crowd here today. And um, my name is Paul. I'm the library director for this wonderful library that we're in today, the Brockton Public Library. And thank you very much. Thank you. And I'd like to begin by uh, welcoming you all here on the behalf of the library trustees, the board of trustees, Jocelyn Meek, chair. Uh, on behalf of the library foundation, Brenda Rodriguez, that president. And on behalf of the SEIU 888 union that is the workforce in this library, welcome to the Brockton Public Library today. So we are here today to, uh, to celebrate and, uh, and, and unveil a, a, a painting uh, of John Thomas. I did not have the pleasure of knowing John. He, he was here before my time. But the stories I hear are wonderful, and I'm sure that later on we will get to uh, hear some of those stories from our, our speakers. I am here to, to welcome the family of John. Um, Nicole, I believe, is on her way, and, and we certainly welcome her. Uh, Stephanie Thomas. Fin yes. Finley, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm, I'm a good 10,000 foot person. I'm not a good weeds person. Eva Thomas is on Zoom. E Eva Thomas, daughter uh, on Zoom from Sweden, is that right? Yes. We welcome everybody on Zoom today. We wel welcome Eva. Uh, Tina Noyes is here. And I understand Thomas Grilk is here as well. Well, welcome to all of you, and, and we're happy to do this today. Um, before I go into the state delegations, I'd like to also uh, recognize John Arapoff, who is the artist who we commissioned to uh, paint this room. And uh, why we chose John is he's an exceptional artist, but he also restored the mural that's upstairs in the rotunda. So after this event, there's gonna be some jazz upstairs, uh, a little bit of light refreshments. I, I welcome you to go up, take a look at that mural, uh, listen to some great music, and, uh, and, 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 and we'll continue the conversation up there. Um, so we have some, some members of the, uh, of the delegation here. We have the mayor of Brockton today with us, Mayor Robert Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor. And we have members of the state delegation. We have Senator Michael Brady. Where's Michael go? And Representative Jerry Cassidy. Uh, we have... Um, Poet Laureate from Brockton, Philip Asaurus, who will be reading a little bit later for us, Philip. And members from the John Thomas Scholarship Committee, Janet Landerholm, who will also be speaking today. <laughs> Mr. Gary King, uh, past president of the Boston, or Brockton Library Foundation, is also here. And I think I've got everybody. Uh, yes, good. So uh, that's, that's my role. My, my last uh, role for today is to, I'm going to read something that the, the, the members who couldn't be here in person, uh, the ones on, Sky, on Zoom wanted me to read to you. It's dated yesterday, the 10th of December, 2021. To the Brockton Library and the Board of Trustees, we, the family members of John Thomas from Wagner, Aiken County, South Carolina, are so pleased to hear that a portrait of John has been commissioned in his honor. We feel so overwhelmed with pride that our cousin's talent and his hard work is still being rewarded. Congratulations to our beloved Johnny. A star is added to his crown. And this is signed the Thomas family of South Carolina. And to that end, I would like to welcome to this to the podium the Honorable Mayor Robert Sullivan, Mayor of Brockton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you to the City of Champions. I want to take a moment, first of all, to thank Paul and all the dedicated members that work here at the library every single day at the main branch, named after our esteemed late Senator Thomas P. Kennedy. Uh, the East Branch and the West Branch. I want to thank Jocelyn Meek and Lisa O'Donnell and all the dedicated members of the Library Board uh, and also uh, Brenda Rodriguez and all the dedicated members on the Foundation. Uh, everybody that worked together to make today possible. This is a historic day. John Thomas was truly a champion in our city of champions. Born in Cambridge but 45 years here in Brockton. You know, was an Olympian, represented our nation in Rome and Tokyo, won a silver medal and a bronze medal. Think about that, a silver medal and a bronze medal living here in Brockton. 
that's an example for the next generation. Anything is possible. Now, I had the opportunity to meet John, and I remember it clearly. We were running the Rocky Marciano Road Race, and back then it started at Brockton High. And he was a big man, a hulking man. And I looked at this guy, and I was like, wow, an Olympian right here. I mean, could touch him. But I was in my 30s at the time. You should have seen the boys and girls, the kids, going up to him. And he took time and spoke to each and every one of them. So that's just an example of who the man was. And then his dedication and commitment to the library and to sports. And I'm glad, I'm glad the president of the BAA is here today, too, because it speaks volumes. So on behalf of all of the citizens, almost 106,000 here in the city of Brockton, I want to thank the Thomas family. I want to welcome you here, those here and those abroad. I want to thank you again, Paul, for making this a reality. And more importantly, the artist. I can't wait to see the unveiling, so thank you, sir. And I do have a citation, and it's on behalf of the citizens of Brockton, and I just happen to be one of those citizens that serves as mayor. Official citation, be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his appreciation to the family of John Thomas and recognition of Mr. Thomas' portrait being unveiled at the Brockton Public Library. It gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as our collective appreciation and it's uh, duly signed by myself, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton, this 11th day of December, 2021. Everybody, I uh, thank you. I just again want to say thank you and uh, happy holidays from my family to yours. Be safe, be well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we inserted a, another uh, speaker in the program. Senator Brady, would you please come up and, and you have a citation as well. Thank you, Paul, and thank you to everyone who came today on this wonderful, quiet winter day as we're having out there. At least it's not snowing as of yet, but I don't want to curse it. But I want to thank, as the mayor mentioned, all the members of the library trustees and the library foundation and all the employees and the members of SEIU 888. You put your heart and soul into your jobs every day. And this is a beautiful library. And um, Representative Cassidy worked to get the library named after our esteemed Senator Thomas Kennedy. And I want to thank him as well. And um, I remember as a, as a young lad, a lot thinner than I am now, and less gray hairs, that the, the library members fought to get funding to put a beautiful addition to this library. Many, many years ago, we went into uh, the, the Boston delegation before I was a legislator, I was on the city council, and Mayor Virginia Curtis was a part of that as well, who lived right down the street here, and, and the library directors had a little candy hat, have a hat, support our library, and were able to get our delegation in the state house to overturn a veto from one of our former governors to get additional library funding for our library to put this beautiful addition on the library. We're so honored to be, this is one of the most beautiful libraries in the Commonwealth, and it was built with a Carnegie grant at the turn of the last century, and, um, and we're so grateful to be a part of this delegation. So, and to the Thomas family, thank you for being here, whether it be online or in person. So I'm honored to present this citation Official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the family of John Thomas in recognition and honor of John Thomas as a scholar, a world-class athlete, tremendously community-minded person, and a true embodiment of the City of Champions. This is signed by the Senate President Karen Spilka, the Clerk Michael Hurley, and myself, Mike Brady. Thank you very much. I want to thank our mayor as well, Bob Sullivan, for doing a great job and being very supportive of our libraries as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator. Uh, glasses time. Can keep everything on the podium time. All right, up next is um, uh, Thomas Grilk, president of the Boston Athletic Association. <laughs> sir, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. <laughs> thank you. Welcome, Pete. Welcome. You're one of nine people to get it right. <laughs> well, good day, everybody. It is delightful to have an opportunity to be here to talk just a little bit about the athletic achievements of, uh, of JT, BAA member John Thomas. 
But you heard a name a few minutes ago, and if we're going to talk about Olympic legends out of the greater Boston area, there is a person here who was through the 60s in the top two American women figure skaters uh, in, in the United States, a two-time Olympian in 1964, 1968. You heard her name earlier, Tina Noyce. Tina? <laughs> She and JT, great friends who traveled the world doing this and that. Uh, <clears throat> now, now, for me, sometimes when one is asked to speak to a group, particularly a group one doesn't know, one has to make sure to write it all down because you might forget something. Not this one. Not this one. As a kid growing up around here, some years younger than, uh, than JT, he had just a vivid effect on me as a sports fan. I remember everything. I remember when the kid from what I thought of as Cambridge went down to New York, became the first man ever to jump seven feet in the high jump indoors at the Milrose Games. I remember vividly when he went off to the 1960 Olympics in Rome as the favorite to win the high jump. This, this kid lost to two Russians named what? Robert Shavalakatsi won the gold medal. No one had any idea who he was. Second place went to Valerie Brumel, who became one of the great jumpers of all time and whose name will come up again in a second. And then, four years later, 1968, Tokyo, JT, favorite again. And at that, jumped seven feet, three inches, and three quarters to set an Olympic record and to, to meet the highest height in the Olympic Games that year. But Valerie Brumel had fewer losses and he got the gold medal. Holy cow, how do, how do you deal with that thing? Well, you deal with it really well as an inspiring sportsman uh, over many years. And over the decade of the 1960s, JT and Valerie Brumel went at it all over the world. For those who are a little younger than I who remember the 1980s, it was magic and bird, only on an international scale as, as they went after each other. It was magnificent to watch. And in those days, you'd never missed Wide World of Sports to see those, those events. And the jumps, for those of us around here, were absolutely at the top of the list because our guy was doing it. And then after his Olympic career was over, well, then what happens? Well, he did a variety of different things, some in business, some in the public sector. And then back to what really mattered to other people in athletics. Went back to being a coach at Roxbury Community College, being the athletic director at Roxbury Community College, giving back, doing for others what he had been able to achieve much more on his own uh, in becoming a great, great Olympian, great athlete, and great individual. Now for us at the Boston Athletic Association, JT, the greatest Olympian in our ranks over the last hundred years. And we may never see his like again to what he did, not simply at the Olympic Games, but in competition all over the world. And then in looking for ways to give back. And among other things, a library trustee. How many great athletes aspire to become a library trustee? If, if you make a list of great Olympians who also have on their resume library trustee, it's going to be a very, very short list indeed. There may only be one name. And it speaks volumes that one who was so accomplished athletically became much more immersed in books and reading and in things that followed his athletic career. Daughter Stephanie will give you a much better sense of that. I'll talk athletics, she'll talk humanity. There is perhaps nothing better that can be said of any of us than that we have made a difference. And that's what JT, that's what John Thomas did in his life in every way. Made a difference, including right here in this building. For us at the BAA, for me as the person who gets to do it, it is an immense privilege to join you here today and have a chance to talk about somebody who was so important in the lives of so many. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, up next, we have um, Stephanie Thomas Finley, daughter of John Thomas. Stephanie? Thank you. Yeah, I can't remember anything. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm honored and humbled to be here today on behalf of my dad, John Thomas. Everything I know about my father's athletic career, I actually learned from people like you, his colleagues, and newspaper articles. My dad didn't talk a lot about his accomplishments in track and field, and my kids had to beg to see his medals and his awards. What I do know about my dad was that he was incredibly proud of his community. He was committed to making positive change and would often tell his grandchildren and myself how important public service was. He was also a voracious reader. He and I shared our love of a good book, and he was often pushing them at his grandkids. JT was a very quiet man, but was quite vocal about things that he was passionate about, education and giving back. I remember calling him for advice. I was a young single mom, and wanted to make a way for myself and my children. He asked what I wanted to do, and I told him my dream job was to work in public service. He was there from the minute I graduated paralegal studies throughout the interview process, all eight of them. He talked me through them. And he was the first person I called when I got the job at DYS. It was only after I found, it was only after the fact that I found out JT was a probation officer for DYS when the commissioner walked past and asked who the guy's pitcher was on my desk and how I knew him. JT never told me he worked there, never told me about his career because he wanted me to do this and he wanted me to do this on my own. I can't help thinking how humbled he would be by this ceremony and by all of you. This, all of this would have made him so happy to be recognized for his commitment to this library and to his city and his love of reading. To know that his likeness welcomes those who look like him to a place that may have not been so welcoming when he was a young child. I cannot think of anything more fitting or a place more fitting for his portrait to hang. I thank you on behalf of our family. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Up next, Brockton's first poet laureate, Mr. Philip Tesaurus. Philip. To the family of John Thomas, Mayor Sullivan, Senator Brady, Representative Cassidy, the Library Board of Trustees, and especially Director Paul Engel, and distinguished guests. Thank you for entrusting me with this great honor to encapsulate the life and accomplishments of John Curtis Thomas in poetic language. When Paul called me into his office and asked the question, do you know who John Thomas is? Have you heard of John Thomas? My answer was very casual. Nope, never heard of him. Paul shared the same sentiment. The only difference was I am a lifelong Brockton resident. Rocky Marciano? Yes. Marvin Hagler? Of course. Armin Colombo? All champions. Little known fact, Brockton, the first store Santa. Edgar's department store, right up the street. 1883, the first city in the world to have a three-wire underground electrical system when Thomas Edison himself threw the switch to activate it. Even here, where we are standing in 1910, Andrew Carnegie agreed to donate $110,000 3,202,061 in today's date. 
to build a new library. The dedication of the new library took place on June 10th, 1913. So when Paul tasked me with writing the poem for today's dedication, with no knowledge of who John Curtis Thomas was, imagine my astonishment turned to joy, to admiration, as I researched this soft-spoken American hero. Yes, a Brockton hero, working class man. You soared stealthily through life, never seeking applause, adulation, always humble, always challenging yourself. Olympian, not calling yourself hero amid the hours of sweat and toil to become the best of you, your six foot five inch frame, welded sinew and muscle ascending heights as the world marveling at your accomplishments in Rome, Tokyo, destinations we can only dream. Medals bestowed on you, bronze, silver, records shattered in the wake of your excellence on the world stage. And then you, JT, athletic director at the Reggie Lewis Track and Athletic Center, assistant coach at Boston University, and athletic director at the Roxbury Community College, Mr. Thomas, Brockton Library trustee, businessman, you rose above becoming legendary. Eagle Scout, 45-year Brockton resident, first man to jump seven feet indoors, world outdoor high jump record, seven feet three and three-quarter inches. You towering above the measured black and white bar, the applause deafening, mythical, eclipsing the seven-foot barrier 191 times. 13 world record jumps, two-time Olympian, dedication to training, fortitude, focus, heart of a warrior, first African-American member of the BAA, inducted into the U.S. Track and Field Hall of Fame, president of the New England Olympians, champion. Through failure and triumph, you taught us how to persevere, endure, rise, and fall in your words. I gained by not finishing first. If I'd won, I never would have learned as much about people as I did. John, loving and devoted father to daughters, sons, grandchildren, great-grandchildren generations of his lifeblood connected before and after, inspiring all, the Brockton champion, the transcending guardian, the true spirit of sportsmanship, John Thomas, JT, Mr. Thomas, John rising in full flight, your name shines a light on our city, you living life on your terms. Your heart of gold drapes us. You honor us this day, allowing us to proudly call you our son of Brockton, our hero, our Olympian, our friend. Thank you so much, Philip. And our, our final words today, um, at this podium anyway, is coming from Janet Landerholm, president of the John Thomas Scholarship Committee. Janet. Good afternoon. So I was very close to John. John was the man who sat across from me at one of my very first library trustee meetings. And all he said to me, never said a word, that, that, that word that describes him as humble. He's a very humble man. And he looked at me and he said, did you bring those cookies? <laughs> I am the cookie lady, yes. And I said, yes, I did. He said, you know, if you make me those once a month, I'll pay you for them. 
And I said, you don't have to, I'll bring them to the meetings. And I did. And when John ended up in the hospital, now nobody told me he was a diabetic. Not one person told me he was a diabetic, except for the nurse who met me with, uh-uh, he can't have those. And John was probably five feet away and he said, yes, I can. And if you know the size of John, you don't argue with him. You give him the cookies. So when John passed, it was very upsetting. Um, and I thought, somehow we can live on through some of the children in Brockton. So we started the scholarship committee. It was myself, Gary King, and Daryl Brown. There were three of us. And we have continued it. We raised almost $12,000 our first year. We have given out 12 scholarships to boys and girls both who we give first preference to track and field. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. Some of the kids don't apply for it. Last year we had nobody apply, and I think it was because of COVID. Uh, I have enough money to still pass out another two scholarships for the next five years. If anybody wants to donate to the scholarship committee, please see Ms. Meek. She will gladly take your money. Um, at this time, I would like to at least recognize the people who were on the board with John when we all served together. So, uh, Mark Lindy, Margie Moan. Is Ed Miller here? Did I see him? No, there was Ed Miller, Nancy Smith, who's passed, and myself. Was that it? I'm sorry. Oh, and Daryl Brown. Daryl Brown, he was also on um, the Library Board of Trustees, but also on the Scholarship Committee. So I don't have anything else to tell you, um, but I enjoyed making cookies for your dad. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Well, should we um, unveil this thing? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this, this is making me very nervous here, so. Friends, um, this is the conclusion of this ceremony. I uh, would like to invite you all upstairs. There's some light refreshments, some coffee. There's some great jazz music going on up there. And I invite you to continue telling stories about John. Uh, I invite you to take a look at the beautiful mural that we have up there. If you haven't seen it or if it's been a while, re reacquaint yourself with it. And um, other than that, thank you very much for coming today and um, have a great weekend.